Hello and welcome to Surrey Libraries. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Amanda and I work in Guildford and Godalming Libraries and I enjoy walks in the countryside. This year I've been using my walks to bring you some ideas of what to look out for and to inspire you in your walks. Now that the month of March is here we can look out for signs of spring. Spring is so welcome after the short days and the greys and browns of winter. In March we can look out for spring flowers, which always look so fresh and vibrant, such a contrast to the short days of winter. You can see from my nature diary that the colours are really brown and grey, with perhaps some green grass, and the trees are bare and the light is low from the February entry. In the winter months, there is plenty of colour to see if you know where to look, but holly berries and winter jasmine and camellias and snowdrops and early daffodils can be seen from January and February. But in March, the pace really speeds up. Buds start breaking, shoots start appearing and flowers burst open. The daylight hours lengthen and you can feel the smell and energy of the sun when you walk through a woodland on those first warm days of spring as the sap starts to rise. Spring is the season of new beginnings. Fresh buds bloom, hibernating animals emerge and the earth seems to come to life again. Plants grow and food becomes more abundant. So we start to see the birds that migrate to warmer climates for the winter return to our shores. Farmers and gardeners plant their seeds and temperatures slowly rise. Lambs are born and the chickens hatch out and you will see signs of birds nesting. It's the time of year when everything in nature is changing and promising new life and new hope. When the weather's better, everyone seems happier too. Spring is a good time to do things outside. The long evenings mean more playing time outside, picnics or walks out of doors. Look out for tulips, daffodils, irises and primroses in gardens and for snowdrops and crocuses under the trees in woods and by the river. Just now, blossom starts appearing on the trees. If you can't wait for spring to arrive outside, Here's something you can do to make that beautiful blossom come earlier. I'm going to show you how to bring spring early into your home by forcing some blossoms. Buds start to appear on trees in February and this is one of the first hopeful signs of spring coming. You can hasten the appearance of blossom appearing a little by bringing stems or branches inside and the warmth of your home will speed up the development and opening of the flowers which can be so uplifting. So you can try this with any tree or shrub whose flower buds begin to show in late winter. So I've chosen blackthorn, apple blossom, spirea and cherry blossom and also some elderflower. So to force your blossoms, you will need a pair of secateurs or sturdy scissors. The branches or stems cut from spring blossoming trees or shrubs with developing buds. Some vases or jars in which to display your blossom and some tap water. So the first thing you need to do is identify the trees and shrubs you plan to use. Take your secateurs and cut a few branches or stems from your tree or shrub. If you don't have anything suitable in your garden, you could ask a neighbour or a friend if you could cut a few stems from their trees. Do make sure that you ask their permission and only take one or two stems from each shrub. You don't need very much to make a good display. So add water to your vases and jars, then place your stems in your vase.
Once you've done that, stand the vases in a warmish, well-lit place and the blossom should open in the next week or so. So we'll come back and have a look in a week or maybe two and see how they've fared. You could decorate your jars with ribbon if you wanted to. I'm really pleased with the blossoms. I was amazed at how well they flowered in the warmth of the house. So whilst you're waiting for your buds to blossom, you could make a game of bird bingo to record the birds you see when you're out and about. So to make a game of bird bingo, you will need a sheet of paper, a sheet of coloured card, a ruler, some coloured pens or pencils, a pair of scissors and some glue. So first fold your piece of paper to create six sections. So first I'm going to fold it into three. And then if I fold it in half, when I open it out, I have six sections. Now draw some dividing lines along the folds. Now think about where you're going to do your bird spotting. Are you going to be in your garden, in the playground, by the river or in a wood? Think about which birds you might see there at this time. So not all birds stay with us throughout the year and you're likely to see some different birds near the river to those in a wood. So choose five birds you're likely to see or hear. You can draw or paste a picture of one of the birds into each of your six sections. So my drawing isn't up to much, so I'm going to use pictures which I've cut from magazines and from Canva. Take your glue and stick a bird picture in each square. So I have a robin, a goldfinch, a starling, a blackbird and a sparrow. You could leave the sixth square blank for a bird that you hadn't expected to see. You can colour in your birds using some coloured pencils if you've drawn them. So next you need to make some counters. You can do this by cutting six squares of coloured paper that fit onto your bird squares. So again, if you fold your card into six sections, Fold into three first, then fold down the middle, and 
and then cut your squares out. There you have six counters to cover the birds when you see them. So to play your bird bingo, choose a spot to look out for birds and then when you see them, cover your picture. Once you have a full house, you can shout bingo, but don't shout too loudly as you'll scare the birds. So it's not just birds who visit our parks and gardens and woodlands. You may prefer to keep watch for other visitors and residents. If you're by a river, you might um, see ducks and swans and dragonflies. You might want to look out for insects and butterflies. Perhaps you're doing your watch in a woodland and you might even see a deer. Um, if you're very lucky you might see a hedgehog but they do tend to come out at night more. You could also keep a record of the different birds you see out and about throughout the year. You should see many more birds in the spring and the summer. Or perhaps you weren't able to see or spot the birds. Perhaps you could make a recording of the birds you hear when you're out and about. Bird bingos adapted from one of the many craft ideas found in Annalise Lim's book, 10 Minute Crafts. You can order craft books and um, also maps to help plan your outdoor activities. You can order these through the Surrey Libraries catalogue or you could ask a library staff member who could help you with your book selection. Thank you for joining me today. We'd love to hear what wildlife you saw on your walks. Please do post your photographs and comments on social media so that we can see what you've been doing. For more craft ideas, follow Surrey, Surrey Libraries on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye.